He became known as the bogus beggar through a deadpan panhandling act all over Kentucky. Him give me money and to get some eat. Even caught in his fake act outside a Lexington police conference about him. I appreciate you guys busting me. <laughs> I appreciate this. Yeah, I'm really good at it, really good. I clear about $100,000 a year doing this. He told reporters he used to be a millionaire, receiving $2.5 million in 1993 after being injured in a motorcycle accident. My, my bead, bead, bead boy, I'm just playing. I got to go, y'all. I got to make some money. Many times, Gary Thompson vowed to stop faking a mental disability. Whenever I ask you for money, I won't act mental. I spotted him panhandling in Louisville at fast food restaurants, convenience stores, changing clothes to fit the situation, not needing his wheelchair during timeouts from his act, and then back at it, waving down people downtown. When he spotted a guy in a tie, he saw a potential payday. But it was me wearing a hidden camera. Please help, but, but spare my, my wheelchair today and all my coins, somebody take it. You fell out of your wheelchair today? Yeah, mine need to get but spare, get back home. What's wrong with you? Mine was hit by a truck when nine year old, but I know her that bad. This little bit left side he me preset. What is your name? My name is Gary Davis. Gary Davis? Nice to meet you. When I pulled out another camera, everything changed. You're, uh, you're really Gary Thompson. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm my name is John Bull with Wave. Been watching you. You're the guy, you're the bogus beggar guy that makes a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? No. And you're able to change your voice? I've seen all the stories on you. That is a lie. That's a lie? No. I noticed your speech got a little bit better just now. Not a lie. I never asked him nothing. I'm going to Church Hill down. Gary, I know what your deal is now. Let's just be real here, okay? I'm not doing no deal. Leave me off camera. No uh, one will be on it. Is it true that you burned through $2.5 million in a motorcycle crash lawsuit? Can not burn. Don't want to be on camera. I break it. Don't you feel bad doing this, faking it like this when there are real people I'm out here? I'm not faking nothing. After that confrontation and other reports on Gary Thompson, the bogus beggar became internationally infamous. But it all caught up with him when the feds found out because they can do something about it when they get duped. Thompson pleaded guilty to falsely representing his mental condition in order to collect $106,000 in disability and Medicaid benefits over four years. But the 27 months in prison recommended in the plea agreement wasn't enough for the judge, who tacked on another 15 for a total of 42 months. He's out now, and guess what he's doing? Yep, that's Gary Thompson right there. I've been following him around Louisville where he's doing the same thing. Same spots, same stores, same routine. So I went undercover and walked by him, working people for money at these gas pumps. Mine were like a big red and two dollars for bus fare, please. Two dollars for bus fare? A uh, dollar fifty there and a dollar fifty back, so that makes two dollars, right? A dollar fifty and a dollar fifty. How much that equals? $3? Yeah. yeah. The Mental Disability Act changes when he recognizes who he's talking to. Are, are you Gary? Yeah. Are, are you, you John Bowl? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm Gary. Yes. So I pull out another camera again. Saying that you're still faking your condition, embellishing your condition. No, sir. I'm not. No, I'm not in condition. Well, when I first walked up on you, you had you kind of had your voice changed. Yeah, I have I have personality, different personalities at times. The doctor tells me. You have different personalities? He says he has multiple personalities and then starts having physical problems right there. That's a muscle spasm, John. Your what? That's a muscle spasm. You just had a muscle spasm? Yes, sir. I can walk a little bit. He shows me his physical problems, but I keep going back to his intellectual ability. What do you say to people who say you're, you're, you didn't learn anything in prison, you're still faking your condition? They're liars. I'm not faking any condition. But isn't that what you were convicted of, of faking your condition with a, no. a, getting government money? That's why I pled guilty, yes. Yeah. I'm not faking any condition. My left side is paralyzed. You, so you saw the videotape, like over in Lexington, where you're laughing about it, and you're saying, yeah, I make $100,000 a year, I can change my voice, which we've seen you do. But I am disabled, so I'm mentally and physically. So how long have you been in Louisville? About a month now. About a month? What are you going to do next? Try to get a job somewhere and do the right thing and straighten my life up. 
but it's I'm homeless. I'm not, I'm not a bogus beggar. I don't have anything. I wasn't bogus before. That's all I have to say to you. Have a good day. Okay. A Wave 3 News investigation of an alleged drug dealing house leads to an unlikely twist when we track down the owner. The number one request I get for investigation are drug dealing houses endangering and ruining neighborhoods. Follow along now on one of them in this undercover troubleshooter exclusive where we find a spirited defense at the end of a church aisle. The only place at the corner of Herman and Coleman busier than the bus stop is the house next to all the students walking by. A neighbor asked me to investigate 3240 Herman Street, saying it's supposed to be a transition home, but it's nothing more than a crack and heroin spot. All hours of the day and night, there's constant flow of traffic to this location. Every time I watch over two weeks, afternoons or evenings, I record as many as 15 people per hour coming and going from the large house. They can be seen counting something in their hand when they emerge. Traffic is often stacked up in the street out front. There are hand-to-hand -hand transactions outside, too. Police tell me when scores of people are seen coming and going from a home after spending a couple of minutes inside, it's likely a drug house. The neighbor reports watching nurses and all types of people buying heroin on the first floor, and crack is delivered by a black car. Every time I watch, day or night, I record a black car stopping in the street, and someone from inside the home walks out the second it pulls up, looks around, reaches in, and grabs a couple of handfuls of something, walks back inside the house, and the car whisks away. The only time I can get a shot of what's in hand, it appears to be money. And the flurry of people coming and going from the house continues. We trace the license plate of the black car to a 37-year-old Louisville man who has been indicted twice for cocaine trafficking and served prison time. During one of these rendezvous, we pop up and walk up to ask them some questions. The driver takes off. Excuse me, sir. Hi. I'm John Bull with Wave 3. I'm responding to a complaint about this house right here being a drug dealing house. Oh, no, I don't know how a drug dealing house, man. No, man, because I won't be on no TV, man. What's that? I won't be on no TV. When this black car comes each day, what, what, when you go out there, what are you getting from him? I'm not getting nothing, man. Come on, man. Come on with that. Sir, I got video of a lot of people coming and going from here. What? It's a room. No, but I mean like six, eight, ten an hour coming and going from here. No, no, you don't. Yes, no, I really do. I mean, it can't be. Yeah. They get the wrong guy, man. They get the wrong house. Okay. I find the owner of the house a couple blocks away at his car detailing shop, where I tell him about the neighbor's complaint and what I observed. I run a pretty tight ship. I'm, I pass the church, and all I do is give a person a place to stay, and if they have the money, then they rent a place. But I don't have a drug house. I don't have a mad house. You sound like you've heard this complaint before from somebody. Well, I always hear it. You know, I'm an ex-drug addict myself. For 28 years, I've been clean. The following day, Pastor David Fortney invites me to Kingdom Come Church, where he has preached for 12 years. Prison saved my life. It took the heroin, it took the cocaine, it took the crack, it took the alcohol, it took all street activity. I graduated from it. So I speak against it because I don't condone it. He says he owns about 40 properties, and in many of them, like Herman Street, he's just trying to help people. Sometimes when I get to many jobs, it's hard to be a landlord, and it's hard to be a preacher. Because for one, you cannot be omnipresent. Omnipresent is only a thing that the Lord has a true attribute of being. He can be everywhere at once. I am not omnipresent. After hearing what I found, he says he went to the house, talked to the tenants, and told some to leave. These people over, they are nothing but addicts. They ain't no, ain't no drug dealers in my building. These people are addicts. They got habits. So I, as a good citizen, shared the findings of my investigation with Metro Police. We'll see what they do. They told me they've mm -hmm. had no specific complaints on that place yet. Huh. So we will uh, stay tuned.